This monogram suitcase belonged to Sarah Grand, the writer credited with coining the term New Woman. Sarah Grand lived in Bath from 1920, and we're very fortunate here at Canterbury Christ Church University to have her suitcase with some of her objects in it. Um, here we have a photograph album which contains images of the house that she lived in. Through her photograph album, we inhabit her world. This tiny sepia image of Crow Hall reveals the opulence and grandeur of the house where she lived. This house was bought by William Tyndall and his sister Ruth Tyndall, and Sarah Grand lived with them. She was a house guest, so she didn't own the property, but she became the Lady Mayoress of Bath during her time living with these brother and sister. And gradually, you get the sense that she um, treats it very much as though it's her house. If we turn the page, we can see more here. So on this side, we can see um, we've got tennis grounds um, and we're seeing another view of the house. And then uh, we've got another viewpoint here. Um, but if I turn over here, we've got the front of the house. And just down here, we have a car with a chauffeur. And I can just imagine her as Lady Mayoress of Bath, receiving the chauffeur and going off in her car for official functions. Later on, we have views of Bath. And Sarah Grand writes about Bath in a very interesting way in an article entitled Exquisite Bath, Impressions of a Newcomer. Our appreciation of the beautiful is apt to be discounted by us. Does a born Bathonian, when he looks from his window at night, see through a veil of lilac mist a fairy city, jewelled with yellow topaz and feel its charms? Or is it only to his accustomed eyes a familiar expanse of streets and crescents, thickly sprinkled with fog-bedimmed lights, which interests him not at all because his object in looking out was just to see what sort of weather it was. In many cases it must be so, yet it is good to think that in many more the lovely scene never fails of its effect. So we also have um, her passport. Um, this is from 1921. And uh, inside you can see it opens up to an enormous size. And uh, in her passport, we have an image of Sarah Grand, but we also have all these amazing um, stamps to show where she traveled. And so she got her passport because she was going on a European tour. And we can see that because she visits um, Holland, she visits Germany, um, and we have here a warning to intending travellers to Germany. The passport office signs it actually in 1923, this advice. So it's been pinned in um, to tell people about problems about travelling in Germany and having to carry endorsements uh, it, within those areas. Another interesting thing about Sarah Grand is she lived in the house in, uh, in Bath, Crow House, um, from 1920 to 1926, when a devastating fire gutted the house. And she lost many of her manuscripts, uh, all of her poetry. And so the things that we have feel even more special because uh, these are um, the last of her effects. So these date from the period when she was living at Seven Zion um, Hill Place where she moved with her sister after the fire at Crow House. We can see quite poignantly here, we've actually got the insurance documents for Zion Place. So she was obviously very conscious of the fact that she'd been in a, in a house fire. And um, sadly, one of the servants died during that fire. So here we've got her insurance documents for her next property. We also have um, a lot of information about her will. And uh, she was 
66 when she moved to Bath, and she re rewrites her will several times. So we have all the different copies of her will. And here she's got a memorandum and it says, um, for the use of my executors to whom I gratefully confide the task of um, distributing my personal belongings. So we have um, her notes for her will. But what's interesting within here is that we see that um, some of these pages have been torn. So she's changed her mind again about this will um, and she does this several times uh, and we've got those in the suitcase. During her time in Bath, she forms a friendship with Gladys Singer's Bigger and Gladys idolises uh, Sarah Grand and she sends her this Valentine's card um, which uh, she signs uh, inside uh, for my very darling from Gladys. The interesting thing about the relationship between Gladys Singer's Bigger and Sarah Grand is that Gladys um, idolised Sarah um, and wrote a diary about her encounters with her. And um, I'd like to read an extract to you from this diary. And Gladys says, I stood a while in a dream and then climbed the stairs again, now empty of that gentle presence and re-entered the room where they clapped me. But I was too happy, too reverent to reply. Before we left, I managed to secure the end of the one cigarette she had smoked and to bring it away in my bag. That night I wrote to her an amplification of my thanks and more fully in answer to her letter. And why that's so poignant is we actually have um, in the collection uh, a cigarette um, tray, an ashtray that Sarah Grand had. And when we open it inside, we actually have um, a cigarette stub that was smoked by Sarah Grand. So I'd like to think of Gladys Singer's bigger um, squirrel in a way that uh, cigarette stub um, in, in here. It's even got the writing, the make of the cigarette in there and the ash with it. So um, that's quite amazing. Sarah Grant kept this small notebook, which is full of little jottings about books that she's read, um, notes about writers she knows. Uh, it's um, got a small um, newspaper cutting just inside, all about, it's called New Card Trick. And when you read it, it tells you about some new extrasensory perception cards, which are being played with in America. And what's interesting about this is Sarah Grant was interested in, in the idea of um, cards and fortune telling. And so um, this reveals a little bit more about her influences. Um, I'd like to read you a passage um, about this. This is um, from Gladys Singer's Bigger's uh, record of meeting with Sarah, and it's in their first meeting. And she says, we spoke of fortune telling and she told me how the night before, or a few days before the fire at Crow Hall, she had just been playing with some cards and picked out one or two at random, not intending to tell her fortune. They were what she called the speedy card, something to happen quickly, danger by fire, and the death card with the woman. The cook lost her life in the fire, and Madam said it made her feel rather frightened when it all turned out exactly in accord with the cards. So these are just a few of the things that we have in the collection. We have more um, uh, bank statements, we have uh, checkbooks, we have letters from her loved ones. So um, please do come and visit the Sarah Grand collection and find out more about this amazing woman.